Okay, we're going to call to order the Sacramento Transportation Authority and Sacramento Abandoned Vehicle Service Authority board meeting for Thursday, March 9th. And I'm going to turn it over to our clerk. Okay. Right. Good afternoon, directors. Campion? Carr? Here. Frost? Here. Guerra? Hansen? Here. Harris? Here. Hume? Kennedy? Here. McGarvey? Here. Natoli? Peters? Here. Chenier? Here. Cerna? Here. Suen? Turner? And Hal? Here. You have a quorum. If um, Board Member Peterson would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Peters, sorry. <laughs> I'm looking. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, the liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> This meeting of Sacramento Transportation Authority is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T U-verse cable systems. The meeting is closed captioned and webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will replay Sunday, March 12th at 2 p.m. on Channel 14. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should fill out a speaker identification form at the back of the chambers and give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing the board and say your name for the record. Please silence all electronic devices at this time. Thank you. And with that, we're moving on to our... Ma Madam Chair, if I may, I'd yes. like to withdraw item 13 <clears throat> from the agenda. Thanks. Okay. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Any abstentions? Item 13 is off of today's agenda. Your item number one is election of governing board chair and vice chair for 2017. And I'd like to be the first to nominate Patrick Kennedy for our chair for the coming year. So I'll second that. We had a second and a third. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Go ahead, I dare you. <laughs> no abstentions? It's happened. Okay, do we have a nomination for uh, vice chair, which is typically from a um, representative from one of the cities. Anybody interested? Yeah. Raise your hand. I, I nominate Jeff Harris. <laughs> Let's do that. Second. <laughs> I, th I think we need to have someone in case we decide to go forward with a new measure who is uh, in favor of the new measure, and, and I just don't know uh, about Jeff. He's in favor. Just well, and Madam, Madam, Mr. Chair, whoever's in charge right now, I think our tradition has been to rotate, and because the city, just before Miss Howell was chair, uh, the city of Sacramento. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. Unless you're talking about San Francisco, you have to be specific. There's more than one city here. City of Sacramento. Right, Mr. Hume. So, <laughs> it, it's just a question of what the board wants to. Do. I'd certainly support uh, Mr. Harris, but I also think Mr. Hume had a big role in the. Um, measure B effort and seems to be very committed almost so committed that he's asking for another role because <laughs> I should be committed I think <laughs> we can arrange for that <laughs> um, I don't know was that a motion that, that, in a second so no we don't I don't think we have a motion well I think we should discuss based on the strategy and everything what would be best for the board and what's fair Obviously, given, Ms. Howell, you are from East County. Oh, same speech. <clears throat> and? We're trying to get away from you. We're trying to get away from the East County? Well, that's good because neither of the potential vice chairs are in the East County. So. I know, I'm just teasing. Madam Chair? Yes. I, I punched in here. I wasn't sure if you were checking the queue here. She doesn't have that screen today. Uh, oh, Mr. Yes. Kennedy does. So, um, yes. I, I'd like to support Mr. Harris. Um, I, I don't know that any of us uh, are necessarily opposed to uh, to the measure, and I think certainly having the city, city of Sacramento engaged in a leadership position from this board uh, in that context and that role is um, going to continue to be very uh, important. So I would I would support the nomination of uh, Mr. Harris for vice chair. <clears throat> okay. So does that mean we have a nomination and a second? And I, I would just say I anybody else I would want support to either one of them. Um, uh, Mr. Hume did play a big role in the 
uh, Measure B campaign, and I, I don't know, maybe you both could speak up about uh, yeah. your thoughts. Jeff, you kind of played the shy role there, um, so let uh, us know what well, you think. Well, no, I was absolutely in favor of Measure B and certainly campaign for it, if that's your question. And if we had a future one, I, mean, oh. I, I, I don't know, because I didn't see you during the campaign, so. I just wanted I, to may, check if, if, if I can interject on Jeff's behalf, because we were both in the same position uh, in which we had to take a, you know, we were, because we were just coming off of, both of us, uh, a pretty significant lift on the uh, flood assessment. So if Je I, I, I will, ah, okay. I will lump myself in the same category <laughs> of being quiet during the campaign. And I think that, you know, uh, because it's difficult to just finish raising money for one campaign and then going to the next. So just. Not that you needed my defense, but... Well, I appreciate it. That, that's pretty much the case, but... Uh, Is your mic on? No. Yeah. I think well said by Patrick, and so, um, yeah, I mean, I'll accept the nomination, absolutely, and as far as a future uh, um, proposal, there's no doubt that we, you know, we need to move forward with this. No doubt in my mind at all, so... I hope that allays your well, concerns. Without, without getting into something that has since been removed from the agenda, I think it's just important for you to understand, because I've been in this situation a couple of different times, that if when you end up as the chair, whether there is or is not a future ballot measure, you just need to understand that it's, it's more work than it would otherwise be. That part I do understand. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Did Patrick Mr. want to say anything? Patrick? I'm, I'm happy either way, so if the, if the will of the board is to go with Mr. Harris, that's fine by me. You're just happy. I'm just happy. I want to know who the guy in the t coat and tie next to you is, though. I'm, I don't recognize him. <laughs> Occasionally, I don't wear bowling shirts. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, as long as Mr. Hume's happy, then I think we should all be happy. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Of, aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? There we go. I'm, rather than move seats, I'm just going to hand you the gavel. Okay. Thank you. What are Okay, item uh, number two. Uh, point of order, uh, oh. Mr. Chair, is uh, the second part of number one is you should designate yourself for a alternate to the ITOC. What? That's... What is, that? is that a Star Wars character? What is that? <laughs> Uh, yes, the, it's, the, yes. it's the Independent Transportation Independent Oversight Committee. Trans right, Taxpayer Oversight Committee. We need a member from the board to be representative on that committee. Uh, uh, yes, I'd like to assign uh, Jeff Harris to that role, uh, pr provided it takes a lot of time and it's uh, something that's <laughs> <laughs> very difficult. One that one. Okay. Item number two. <laughs> Comments for the public regarding matters not on the agenda. We do have some cards. <clears throat> so we will start. Uh, Mr. James Cathcart. Uh, thank you. I am James Cathcart. I'm re representing STAR, Sacramento Transit Advocacy Ridership. STAR is a group of concerned citizens formed specifically to advocate for increased rapid transit ridership and expand accountability of public transit in the Sacramento region by promoting efficient, safe, clean, and accessible service with optimized intermodal connectivity. We advocate for routes and service hours that serve the needs of those who depend on public transit and provide a compelling alternative to car use. We've come here today for two reasons. First, we want to urge you to conduct public robust, robust public hearings on what a new tax measure should include prior to writing its draft provisions. We believe, as others do, that the lack of proper public participation created a flawed Measure B, and we should start over with a clean sheet of paper. Second, we urge you to increase the funding for Sacramento Regional Transit over what was in Measure B. In order to have a robust public transportation system, sufficient resources must be available to increase ridership and provide incentives for getting people out of the cars and into public transit. We look forward to working with you to design a new tax measure that meets the challenges of our transportation system. And I hope this agency will be very open about information as to how we can participate uh, in this process. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ralph Proper. And Ralph will be followed by John Dieter. Hello. Uh, uh, I was told that you uh, might all have a copy of, uh, of a letter that, that we uh, drafted uh, as, as co-chairs of the Ecos Transportation, uh, et cetera, committee. Uh, we have co-signers from uh, Sierra Club, uh, STAR, Save the American River Association, Breathe California, 350 Sacramento, and the EV uh, folks. Uh, what my letter says is, uh, and l let me just start, I'm, I, I thought I'd be speaking on agenda item 13. I'd be curious if anyone can share why the item was pulled. Uh, I'm just a scientist and a curious guy, I guess. Uh, but uh, what the letter says is that, uh, you know, uh, I was involved, I was on the board of the Lung Association back in the 1980s when we uh, had a seat at the table for the development of Measure A, which, uh, uh, I think it was one of the reasons why it was successful that there was public involvement then. And uh, Measure B last year was developed, uh, you know, as a you guys decided and had to defend what you had, and that's not the way to win public support. Uh, I think uh, if you have a robust public process, there will be a lot more uh, fortune this time and the next time around. I note that the county right now is very involved with a lot of public outreach on the climate action plan, and I think that'll uh, help. Uh, get people behind it and, uh, and a, a successful essential program there. So we uh, basically request that, uh, that you guys uh, d adopt a plan for public participation before initiating the development of a, re a revised funding package. Uh, so uh, that's the basic uh, point I want to say. Uh, certainly we uh, see that, uh, the, that funding for transportation uh, needs to consider other pressing needs of the county, uh, climate change I mentioned, uh, housing is certainly a big issue, equity and air quality. And uh, we look forward to working with you more in the future to uh, have uh, transportation uh, funding that uh, will serve us all. That's what I have to say. <clears throat> Thank you, Ralph. I'll, I'll just say that as the board member who requested that it be removed, I'll answer your question. Okay, and, and after speaking to a few, a few, but not to violate the Brown Act members, um, I felt that it, it, for exactly all of the per reasons that you just stated, that more um, uh, outreach needs to be done on behalf of STA and others in the community before we put it on the agenda. And I felt it was premature. Good. I'm glad to hear it. We look okay. forward to working with you. Thank you. And after John Dieter is Jeffrey, is it Tardigia? No, that Carmen Gia to pronounce Tardigia. Tardigia. Thank you. So, so I'm John Dieter, resident of resident of Sacramento, the city of Sacramento. Uh, like Ralph, I'm a uh, co-chair of the uh, Transportation, Air Quality, and Climate Change Committee of Environmental Council of Sacramento also known as ECOS. So I, I addressed the uh, STA board uh, probably last spring when you were discussing what would go on the ballot for Major A. And a couple of the major points I made at that time was first, the lack of public input in developing Major B. And second, the, the very, as, uh, as James mentioned from STAR, the, 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 the great lack of funding for regional transit or for transit in general in the region. And uh, <coughs> regional transit is currently preparing a plan and it requires in the midterm something like $100 million more, more per year than what they uh, expect in revenue at this point. Uh, may, minus uh, any sort of measure B, and that's that's a full half cent. Uh, so their needs, I think, have priority. Uh, the authority has the responsibility of sure, making sure that uh, that transit has full funding in this region, and without a full public and vigorous public debate about the needs of transit for the region, we will not have a ballot measure that can be approved. Thank you. Thank you. Jeffrey? Well, I'm Jeff Tardigia, and there's a number of subjects I've advocated for, and it's seeming it takes a long time. 
this transportation tax I abdicated to regional transit in 2008. What I'm going to say to you is, is I'm hoping that Sacramento Transit Authority will take the lead and produce over the next 18 months a procedure, a process by which they get out the word to every region, to townhouse meetings, to invite the public to look at what these census and what these statistics came back from the voters about where it needs to be better explained of why at least a one half cent and that's Steve I thank you for bringing that up at RT that at least a half cent tax needs to be brought before Sacramento County and specifically more the region because otherwise as you will see further on the freeways that and I see my time's running out I was going to speak about the connect card and other issues but I will focus on this one and say guys you need to have a great plan <clears throat> thank you Jeffrey and Deborah is it DeRosier DeRosier Good afternoon, I'm Deborah DeRosier. I'm with Ion Sacramento, also Sacramento Taxpayers Association. And um, to reiterate what's already been said, we believe that we need more public input on your next measure that you consider for taxpayers. Taxpayers need to be a part of the plan. Um, alongside with that, uh, the current measure A that's running right now, the PAG or professional advisory group <coughs> is operating in the dark without any public observation. We have no idea what your plans are. Um, I would like to have it considered to at least have the public observe those meetings or sometimes um, videotape them so we can watch them. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Are there any more? We don't have any more cards, so if there's no more public comment. Then we will go to item number three, the executive director's report. Mr. Spencer. Well, I'd like to welcome you to the new year and welcome to the new members. So thank you for serving. Uh, since our last board meeting, uh, staff and I have been diligently looking at ways to manage our work. And uh, so what I've started with is uh, at the direction of the board, I placed a new uh, agenda item on your dais because I just reformat it a bit. Um, but at the direction of the board, we met with the PAG, and uh, in late February, we convened a meeting of the entire PAG, and we discussed the current and the future transportation demands and funding needs. And all the jurisdictions uh, and agencies expressed the need for additional funding. We know the shortfall, and we actually see what this winter has brought about as far as the state of disrepair. Um, one of the things that we look back on is uh, for the ones that did pass in November. We learned from Los Angeles, they passed a half cent sales tax increase and it passed by 70.8%. Uh, they started their outreach process three years prior to the election and one of the sound bites I came away with from the meeting that I attended down there was there wasn't anywhere we wouldn't go to educate the public. Their outreach message was consistent with our outreach efforts. I think we just needed a little more time. Um, but we continue to receive public records requests, um, and that's because many people have taken interest in our work. When I came on board a year ago, you asked us to put, a, put STA on the board, and we, nobody knew who we were. Well, I think we know. <laughs> we see that we, people are taking interest. Um, our Facebook followers has increased. We've had over 3,000 followers in the year that I've been on board, and many of those are sharing the information that's being passed along from traffic alerts to updates on funding to everything transportation. Also since the last board meeting, uh, staff and I have been looking at the ways to manage the work at the STA. I mean, we still have to, a lot of work to be done under Measure A. Uh, we've looked at cross-cutting measures acted to protect the taxpayer dollar. Uh, we've re looked at reducing our <coughs> monthly rent and various other expenses. We've extended our relationships with the banks. Uh, we provided information to our, uh, improve our credit standings, and uh, we have an ongoing study with uh, PFM to look at our cash flow needs. Uh, we want to meet the needs of our, our partner agencies. Uh, we've implemented a simple and uniform progress report form for uh, reporting progress on their projects, and that makes it very consistent, easy to track now. 
And the uh, ITOC has been re reinvigorated. They have overseen our audit and the uh, CAFR, the Consolidated Annual Finance Report. I believe that's the acronym. Uh, but you'll hear about that on another agenda item. And we've implemented uh, a new ITOC website that's independent of the STA website. And it continues to be populated with more and more information on the committee's activities. Uh, we had a meeting in January and it was attended by members of the public as well as Caltrans. And that meeting demonstrates how important the ITOC and their collective expertise is to the STA and its mission to be a steward over the millions of dollars in public funds. Um, been tracking a little bit of legislation for you. I give you a legislative update. Uh, both AB1 and SB1 were introduced right at the beginning of the legislative session, and you probably heard some news about SB1 this morning. And uh, I think the goal is to get through that bill by April 6th. That's a pretty short deadline. But in April 7th, they are in recess, and when they come back, they'll be really focused on the budget bills. So you'll see a flurry of activity surrounding the transportation bills that are being proposed. I also attached uh, a list of the various legislation that affects transportation, so it's just something for your information. Just to let you know that we're trying to keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on under the dome. Uh, for instance, uh, AB 28 is uh, the National Environmental Protection Act Delegated Authority of Caltrans. This really helps to streamline pr uh, projects so that we don't have dual processes, CEQA and NEPA. Um, and it allows us to uh, really put the projects forward much quicker. Um, Caltrans has been an advocate of that, and all of the self-help counties have been an advocate so that we don't have this lapse, because a lapse would mean we have to go back and reapply, which would be a, about a two-year process. <coughs> so that uh, will be heard. I believe it's eligible for the Senate floor vote on March 13th, and um, then it will go to the governor. So we're hoping by the, the deadline of March 28th that it does get passed. And uh, with that, I will take any questions. Questions of the board? Over here. Director Peters. Oh, thank you. Um, on your report, you list upcoming events with uh, six conferences, et cetera. Um, is that, are you planning to attend all those conferences? No. No, okay. I actually have it's been doing this since I came on board. It's for your information because I know that you sit on many boards, but you may have a particular area of interest or something, and that's what I'm trying to do is keep you guys informed of what's coming, especially in the local area, um, that you, you could access and get to know more about the transportation background. Thank you very much. Certainly. Any other questions? One question, Mr. Chair. Um, related to your comment about cap to cap and not being able to support board members in their um, traveling, it made me wonder um, about the available resources for some of the other conferences here. Um, so, you know, it'd just be good if you could follow up with the board and send a list of how expensive these are. So, if you are having a resource deficiency, uh, at least we're aware of what that means. Okay. I can do that. Because some board members may want to go to to something related to the self-help counties. That, that's a relationship that the chair may want to cultivate uh, if we're looking at another measure <coughs> potentially in the future. So, Okay. I will. It, would it be the pleasure of the board then that I include the cost of registration as a, another column on these? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That would be great. I would think that you probably have flyers associated with all of these conferences. If you could just forward the flyers on or oh. hunt, I'm sure you can hunt them down I can online. find them down. Yeah, I can hunt them down. I don't get them. I, I actually do a research on the internet for knowing what's coming up, <clears throat> and that, 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 that's how I populate this. Oh, okay. Just keep you guys informed. Really? All right. Any other questions, comments? Thank you, Mr. Spencer. You're welcome. We have consent items four through eight. Are there any questions or any issues? Anybody wants to pull anything off consent? Mr. Chair, I just want to make a comment on item three. Okay. Or sorry, not item three, item eight. Uh, the Office lease space. space lease agreement. Yeah. Is this the, all right. Go ahead. Um, given um, some of the challenges you were just talking about in your executive director report related to finance, um, Jeff, I know, um, at one point, the Air District had office space to lease, and I think at a lower rate than this, potentially. Did you look at other government agencies where you could co-locate and achieve a lower lease rate than the one at Capitol Mall? 
I um, know that we, we did have some discussion, but the tenant improvements at the Air Quality Management District was uh, part of what was a, a bigger cost as well. And Norm, may I ask him to step up because that Norm helped uh, basically take a lead on this and looking for space. Uh, we did look at a number of uh, available spaces, both inside and outside of downtown. I'd like to ask about SHRA too. I think they have space. Yeah. Re regarding your specific question, whether we collaborated with another agency, we did not. Well, I just, you know, um, Capitol Mall is a, is a nice place. Um, I think that 500 is looking to make good lease deals. I've heard that, so I'm not necessarily questioning the amount, especially because they're savings. But if we have government entities that are partner agencies that have space and we can make an advantageous deal where you can be co-located with agencies that you're working with, it seems to be um, a, a smart uh, value-added strategy, and I think Supervisor Peters' point about SHRA having additional space, is that at their 12th Street headquarters, um, is something also that it would be nice to look at. So I'd be willing to put this off for a month if that's possible. Um, is I don't it, know is, when your lease ends. Yeah, what's, what's the t timing here, Norm? Uh, our actual lease does not expire until September 14th. But we, sorry, what? September 14th. September, okay. But we are in negotiations to uh, end the lease early. So you have enough time? We do. Okay. So I defer to the chair um, as what he wants to do, but if, you, if you'd like to make a motion to continue it, we can uh, do that. I'll, I'll make a motion to continue it. I'll, I'll second, second it. it. Before you it. vote over here. So um, regardless, I, I appreciate the points that Director Hansen has raised. I think they're important. Um, um, I would say even regardless of what the lease rates might, might be on Capitol Mall, there's a, I think there's a serious optics part of this that should not be ignored. Um, I, I will share with you some history. Uh, Jeff, you weren't around at the time. Others on this board were. Uh, back in the mid and late 90s, the Sac Unified School District used to have their administrative space on Capitol Mall, very expensive space. But it wasn't just the amount they were paying. It was the fact that you had a school district occupying the most, some of the, the most expensive office uh, property in the, in the region uh, aside uh, some of the you know more notable law firms and, and banks and whatnot. So just keep that in mind um, in terms of the sensitivity. I think you're hearing today. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good, Director Tully. <clears throat> yeah, if you're going to uh, reach out, I would again. I don't know if there's any sensitivity to it, but I believe that even within some of the county facilities, I think about um, the uh, 827 Seventh next door. There are significant vacant spaces but it's all accessible it's you know you have elevators that are robber again I don't know how it compares if that's you know an optics problem for others that you might be in a, a county building but um, I think that there might be you know the ability again to certainly get suitable space accessible space identifiable space and and so uh, again I appreciate the work that's been done on this but I do think that before we just launch off somewhere else as we're looking at you know taking a step anyway that if we do we do it once if we're gonna make that move and so I would suggest you might want to I talk with the, the county folks as well if that's certainly not problematic for others because I know there's space in some of these buildings where there's been consolidation of departments and so forth and if you're looking for uh, an arrangement that would provide what you need and certainly have uh, existing space that could be you know modified to meet the needs of the authority then it might be <coughs> wise at least to make that inquiry so very good any other questions comments Okay, we have a motion by Director Hansen and a second by Director Chenier to continue this to, I would assume, the next Just meeting? Just item, item eight, and I'll move the balance of the consent calendar. Okay, we yep. can... Yep. I'll second the consent. Yep. Got it. So, uh, but we're, One at a time? Uh, yeah. Uh, so are we moving... Are we... Was your... To the next meeting? Yes. Okay. So we'll take eight first, and uh, we have the motion by Hansen, second by Chenier, to move to the next meeting, the office space lease agreement. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? And second now, we have a motion for the consent, I believe. Yes. Yes. By uh, Carrie made the motion. We have a second? Second. Second by Director Chenier. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Separate items, number nine, the City of Ileton pre-award engagement. Yeah, it, the direction of the board and uh, working with Mr. Natoli, we looked at how to advance uh, the funds for the City of Ileton. We've asked our uh, ITOC and as well as uh, doing a pre-award audit 
Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Baruki, <coughs> our chair of the ITOC, to tell you a little more. Good afternoon, board. As Jeff mentioned, my name's Joan Baruki. I'm chair of your independent taxpayer oversight committee. Um, before I get into the agenda item, I just want to quickly introduce a new member of the ITOC, um, Ms. Uh, Joyce Renison. She's our assistant uh, auditor controller at the County of Sacramento, and she's just joined the board. I wanted to get that out of the way because she's missing a retirement party for this. <laughs> and now we have a full <laughs> ITOC. Um, item nine, the City of Isleton pre-award uh, engagement. Last fall, the executive director approached the uh, committee about releasing some 400,000 plus in funding that the, um, from the original Measure A that the STA had been holding for the City of Isleton. Uh, when the committee asked why the monies were being held and had never been released, there was uh, discussion and explanation concerning the uh, accounting procedures and financial statements with the City of Isleton. We asked that uh, a pre-award audit be conducted before release of the funds to ascertain that the proper accounting measures are going to be in place before you hand over the money. That uh, pre-award audit was done. Uh, the STA engaged Richardson and Company to perform that uh, audit. They came back, and based on the results of that audit, the ITOC did vote to accept the findings and the staff's recommendation that the authority release the funds uh, it's currently holding on behalf of IELTON. Um, I believe this is on the agenda for an actual um, vote by the authority. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Director Natoli. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I want to thank the ITOC and certainly uh, our committee members and certainly our staff for working with City of Alton. I would just uh, note, too, that um, they just recently they had a turnover on their council and a newly elected mayor uh, from their council ranks, but a new, new council member as well as a uh, recently a uh, new city manager, uh, a previous uh, a city manager had retired last year, um, and uh, so I had a chance to meet him actually a week ago Friday, and I would uh, suggest it might be a good idea, Jeff, just to, to you know, as this goes forward, assume we take this action here today, uh, I think to convey probably in written form the uh, auditors finding the recommendation and then the, the letter to, uh, finding in the sense that there are some things that they can do to, to track the monies properly. I can. Uh, assure everyone here, and I think I've said this before, that there's not unlike all of our jurisdictions, there's plenty of work that the money can be put to good use to. And, and the fact that they haven't drawn on this for a number of years because of their own situation is no fault of this authorities or anyone else's. But I do think that the money would be put to good use and hopefully this construction season. And the county, just by way of information too, I know that uh, through the county executive's office that uh, we've offered to assist them with any technical assistance uh, in the event that, you know, putting together contracts and, and, and those types of things, uh, at least under the previous administration. We'll see what the new city manager's take is on that. But um, I think the the audit was, was a good idea. I appreciate the work that the committee did. And certainly, uh, Jeff, you and your staff following up. Uh, uh, this is it's kind of funny because it's talked about the original and then talked about the old Measure A money, so what, however you want to call it, the money's been there for some time, and I think it will be put to good use, uh, particularly after this uh, 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 rainy season. So um, after we have any other discussion, I'm prepared to move the item. Okay, did, uh, Director Peters has a question, but is there a second? So just get on the table. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Director Peters. Uh, thank you. I wanted to say I, I thought it was a good idea to do the audit, uh, so thank you for that. And I'm, but I'm wondering who is paying the 3,500? Is it coming out of their allocation of it the city of Isleton, or is it paid for in some, by some other means? No, actually, it came out of the uh, budget allocation for the ITOC committee to perform various audits throughout the year as we see fit. Hmm. Which is part of the administrative budget. Excuse me. It's part of the administrative budget. The tight talk is okay. funded. Under it seems to me it should be coming out of their allocation, but uh, I think that's probably a choice the board can make on your budget. Yeah, I don't think it should come out of the administration budget. I don't know, Don. Is that okay with you? 
Well, let me, well, let me ask again. I, I, I understand the reasoning behind that, but has there been other audits performed by um, the ITOC in their work over the years? And if so, have those been assigned to whatever jurisdiction? Maybe this is unique in that sense, and so I get that. But uh, I guess what the normal course is, and I, you know, I wouldn't object. I mean, this, this amount of money, thirty-five hundred dollars less or not, is going to be significant for the city of Alton. But I guess I would want to know what's. Not just not just the precedent. budget. Yeah, what, what's the, what's the precedent? Have we in the past paid for oversight when we've had other entities? I, that I am not aware of any other audits of this kind being conducted other than the comprehensive annual financial report. Right, the one report. that's on for later on. Uh, yeah. And then uh, any kind of performance audit definitely should be coming out of the administrative budget. Norm is our all-seeing historian. <laughs> All-knowing historian. <laughs> the, um, so the Measure 8 ordinance, uh, when it formed, when it, uh, the provisions for the ITOC call for up to $150,000 be allocated for the ITOC to do their, to do the work. Obviously, $150,000 is, it's, uh, it, we don't have that within our administrative budget. Um, so in last year's budget, we allocated $65,000 for the ITOC, 52000 of which went to the, um, the yeah. for the annual audit. And so there was uh, money left over in that por portion of the budget for the ITOC to perform other audits as they see necessary. Okay, I, so I, I guess, and I appreciate that, so I, I just say uh, to the uh, suggestion that we do this, that if that's going to be the case, that in the event that there are future audits required of our member agencies, then it should be understood unless there's other circumstances that are unique to that particular situation, and then that those audit expenses will be borne by uh, the, the member agency. Um, you know, and and I, cause I, you know, I, I think if it's fair for Island, Island, then it should be fair for others as well. So I'm, I'm fine to, 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 to include that okay. as part of the motion, but that, uh, that kind of becomes the precedent. And again, if there are unique circumstances, you'll bring them to this body saying, well, that wasn't the normal far of their own, they had to do an audit or something, so. I think that okay. the reason it was done that way is because in, in the ordinance, it specifies what are eligible expenses with, uh, that are done with the transportation funds that are allocated to the agencies. And then there's a separate amount for, ad, for the administration, which is actually the catch-all for everything else. And that's why it was done that way. Okay. So is it appropriate then in the motion to deduct this from the amount that they have available, or does it come out of, do you have to? When he has bill. Uh, I think you can do it either way, because IL-10 was in violation of their MOU for so many years. It's a cost that we shouldn't have to uh, expend. Uh, uh, out of compliance. <laughs> out of compliance. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, it, it would otherwise be a proper administrative expense, so I think it's at the discretion of the board. Okay. All right. Well, then I, I would amend my motion to include that, but then, uh, you know, and we take it, I guess, on a circumstance-by-circumstance circumstance basis. So. Okay. Okay. okay, Director Howell. I think um, in this particular instance, I think maybe Don and I have been sitting on this board for probably longer than anybody else here, with the exception of Norm, who has been around longer than we have. But <clears throat> my feeling is that, um, again, this isn't a lot of money, but and, and it was required because of um, so much instability in the city of Wilton, which unfortunately that took place, but I'm glad to hear that they're on the road to recovery. Yeah. But I think maybe it would be, not that I'm trying to teach anybody a lesson, but I think that would behoove all of the rest of the member agencies not to find themselves in that situation. So rather than have everybody in the region pay for mistakes or difficulties that Ilton had that Ilton, you know, have to spend that money out of their allocation to keep everybody else. You know, I, I, I would venture to guess that an Ilton on, uh, that an audit on the city of Folsom would be dramatically more than thirty-five hundred dollars, and that would be Folsom's lesson to make sure that they don't get in that situation. Yeah. Don said, "Okay, yeah, so. I'm, okay. I'm fine." So that's my my motion is amended to include the release of the amount with the thanks to the, our committee and to our staff, and that the uh, amount of thirty-five hundred dollars be deducted from the. Uh, balance that would be um, uh, released to the city of Alton. And I would second that. And we actually have a second there, and you're okay with it? Yep. Okay. All right. We, uh, is there any more discussion, comments, questions? I have nothing from the public, so is there anybody who wants to speak on this? All right. We have a motion by Director Natoli and second by Director Gana. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Abstain? Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Yes, thank you so much. Yes. You're going to see me for the next two items. <laughs> <laughs>
Number 10, Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, the CAFR of uh, June 30th, 2016, an independent financial audit report for fiscal year 2015-16. This is a receiving file. This is probably one of the most time-consuming uh, efforts that the uh, committee undertakes on an annual basis. This is your uh, annual financial uh, report. Again, Richardson and Company performed this year's audit. Um, what was unique this year was the involvement from the Independent Taxpayer Oversight Committee. Um, we were involved from the entrance audit all the way through uh, review of the various drafts. Um, and we did appreciate being included this year um, because the CAFA reports in my entire career, I've had to do many of them, and they can be mind-numbing to review at the end. Being involved as we went along helped educate some of the new members, but it also helped us have better uh, input as we went through the audit. Um, I am happy to report that when we did get to the end of the process that there were no significant findings uh, in the audit for the uh, Sacramento Transportation Authority. Um, that it was uh, clean. It did highlight some changes and adjustments to the timing of Measure A revenue and expenditure recognition in the financial statements. Um, not that anything had been done incorrectly, it was just uh, a new way that uh, you are now accounting for those funds. It's actually highlighted in Note 12 in the CAFR, which I believe staff should have handed out to all of you. Um, I'd like to thank the staff uh, for being patient with us and uh, spending the time with us to go through all of this um, and present the uh, CAFR to you for this year. I don't believe there's any uh, board action required. This is for information. No, this is re receiving file. Are there any questions of the board? I have nothing from the public. Is there anyone in the public that would like to make a comment question? Okay, thank you for your work. Just one, <laughs> one quick note. I'd like to uh, recognize uh, our accounting manager, Timothy Jones, in his diligent work and, and seeing us. He brought to us a lot of his experience as an auditor from the state of California, and so that really helped to make this process much better than it has been. So I'd like to give him congratulations and thanks. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. J just a quick question for our legal counsel. Um, I just missed it, but I thought we had to accept as a board the financial report, even though there's no. You mean other, approve? Not approve, but typically on boards with the CAFR um, or with other agencies, you're supposed to accept it. Um, but I don't recall having that? anything formally stating that you have to do that. I think it's a GASB um, rule or maybe guideline for best practices related to audits. How about we take it as a receiving file and I'll go back and double check and if we have to have you vote on it next month. It's not month. noticed so we can't, couldn't accept it today, but I think that's the technical. Why don't we just receive and file and if it's necessary, we'll come back. Yeah. Okay, number 11, uh, Independent Taxpayer Oversight Committee, the ITOC update. My last item. Uh, the committee met in January. We didn't hold a meeting in uh, February due to uh, weather and other commitments of the uh, members. But one of the issues uh, discussed that I think would be of interest to this uh, authority was uh, the capability of the authority and its members' jurisdictions to better manage the use of their um, fund commitments, timely use of their fund commitments. Um, we had been approached at the January meeting uh, by Caltrans looking for the possibility of perhaps some trade-offs with another agency in order to advance money for two different projects that they wanted to take advantage of being able to advance those projects. Um, and so that started the discussion at the ITOC uh, committee about the concept of being able to create agreements between jurisdictions that you may have a jurisdiction that has a funding commitment, can't use it in the year that they are promised for, and would they be able to trade with another jurisdiction that could advance their project with the guarantee that the money will be available when the other jurisdiction is ready to use it. 
so we're kind of kicking that idea around and what would that agreement look like. When I was at the California Transportation Commission, we did do that um, on a routine basis when approached by the uh, two jurisdictions that were in agreement and wanted to do that. The thought being we're, we're not in the business of banking the money here. We want to be able to get the money out, get it to use, have those projects get done in a timely manner. Um, we're paying a cost for this money, so let's put it to use. And so we're going to just see if we have a, a, an opportunity for another tool to advance projects. Um, but we certainly won't do anything without coming back to this board and also talking to the uh, various uh, jurisdictions as well. Um, in addition, um, our next meeting is scheduled for March 30th. At that time, we expect to review the quarterly status reports for the projects. Um, this process, this swap agreements process that I just talked about, um, and also begin the review or update, if necessary, of the uh, functional guidelines for the committee. We will also begin to discuss the scope of work for the performance audit that it, of the STA that's due at the end of the calendar year. Um, but we do need to get that scope in place so we can start to go out to bid for that. Um, we're also anxious to hear from uh, PFM regarding the cash flow uh, needs, and that will go a long way into discussion about those swap agreements as well. Um, having said that, are there any questions? Director Peters. Yes, um, thank you. Uh, for your, um, about your comments about Caltrans coming to the ITOC to look into swaps, um, I have some questions about that. I, and we have, I believe we have swapped money before, but a request comes to the board yes. or the commission, not to the ITOC. And I would like some clarification of that procedure before, before you start looking into it, because in the past it's... Yes. I, I, I'm not. I mean, I'm on several transportation boards, and it always, it, it always comes to the board first. So um, that doesn't seem like it's very transparent to me, the, because the ITOC's not. The ITOC cannot approve anything like that. That would have to come to this board. They were coming to the committee to see is there a process. Uh, within the Sacramento Transportation Authority. Okay, I didn't hear the word process, so maybe yeah, I, I no. missed it. it. I'm sorry, we're looking at process for you and what would, what would those agreements look like? Um, some understanding that perhaps there isn't something in place right now. And so anything would have to come back to this board. Process, approval, Were they as talking well. about projects that were within the jurisdictions that are represented on this commission? Yes. Correct. Yes? I didn't hear what you said. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm sure we've done that before, but it's all been at board level. I, I don't know if Caltrans was involved or not. But, yeah. Um, no, the ITOC is not looking to usurp the authority of the, of the authority. We, um, we were uh, merely trying to facilitate what would a, a good process look like, and especially since one of our charges is to look at project status, um, how uh, and progress um, and look at cash flow needs we were thinking we really should have something in place so when something does come to staff to come to the board that you have a basis for deciding whether or not it was something feasible mm. does that make sense it does okay Good. I still would go back to, I think, that process discussion needs to be from this commission. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. Thank you very much for all of your hard work and for being here today. Thank you. Number 12, budget to actual analysis for the second quarter of fiscal year 2016-17. I'm sure you do, Jeffrey. I just don't see it. Oh, there, hey, there it is. Thank you. Uh, rhymes with Carmen Gia. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> um, public comment is when you use GAP, generally accepted accounting procedures, when you use ITOC, that when I'm on the TV, 
appreciate this board making those explanations for the public. Um, I will learn about the ITOC and will participate. One of the things that I will say to both of you, in which Sue Peterson reminds us now, is what procedures are in place and where you find them. Public doesn't see them, so it's hopeful in the future that the public will be able to see them. And not just being on the website, but I'm hoping that there will be better outreach in the future to the public. And I'm your public, and wanting to encourage you as advocating is, is do a better outreach to the public. Because like I said, from 2008, STA was a mystery to me, and this is now a new one. Let us do better in the future. Gary, yes, I'm sorry. You, you didn't have a card in earlier, and I th assumed that item 1-1 was a Roman numeral, so <laughs> Deborah, you're up next. <laughs> um, thank you again. Um, Deborah DeRosier, I'm with ION Sacramento and the Sacramento Taxpayers Association, and I did attend the ITOC meeting um, in January. And I did also, um, Supervisor Peters, think it was a little bit odd for Caltrans to be there basically lobbying for money. And the dollar amount that they were lobbying for was $7.3 million for a uh, Highway 50 project and a $30 million amount for an I-5 project. And um, those were just the amounts that they were asking for that day. Um, I was wishing that Mike Penrose was there asking for money for county roads because, uh, you know, the way I see it, um, you have your jurisdictions with the Sacramento Transportation Authority, you have the taxpayers that pay the money, and then we have the state. Caltrans and Caltrans is coming. It's it's like me going to my kids and asking for money. Um, it just it really bothers me that we can't take care of what we have in our. I'm in the unincorporated area, and our roads are awful, and we need the money. I mean, if you, if it needs to come from bond funds for capital projects, do it. Um, but when I saw Caltrans there at the meeting, I was really uh, upset. Um, but I do appreciate the ITOC meetings. It was very professional and um, very informative. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Any questions? Yeah. Wayne Lewis from Caltrans, can I have a Absolutely. Please state your name for the record. My name is Wayne Lewis, uh, project manager with Caltrans. I think there was a misunderstanding a little bit. The projects that we were talking about, the I-5 corridor project and the Sacramento 50 corridor project, are programmed in measure, the new Measure A. In the most recent capital allocation worksheet, the funding was anticipated for those projects to be out a few years from now. So we were talking to staff about is there any flexibility or possibility of accelerating funding for those projects because we have some rehabilitation projects that we think we can build on to lower the total cost to the STA for completing the HOV or the bus carpooling projects. The discussion that we had was, well, the ITOC has taken a much stronger role in analyzing, you know, what the bonding capacity, looking at accounting finance reports, those types of things. So we wanted to start the discussion with the ITOC about, you know, what flexibility might there be, when are the updates to the capital allocation worksheets, those types of things, and when funding would be available for various projects. So we are looking at an opportunity, say, for, uh, a $30 million investment in the I-5 corridor project, uh, which was anticipated to cost over $85 million if it was a standalone project later, if we piggyback on a rehabilitation project that we expect to go to construction as early as next year. So it's a situation if we accelerate funding by four or five years, we could reduce the ultimate cost to the SDA. So it's not trying to go around the board, but trying to be more prepared when we came to the board with a request. Thank you. Director Howell. I think that's that's an important distinction that this is money that's already in the Measure A expenditure plan. Yes. It's not that Caltrans is coming forward and saying, oh, can I have $50 million that wasn't already accounted for? 
Correct. So that's that's very very important distinction. The rehabilitation funding goes out by formula, whereas the capital projects trying to anticipate when they would be ready and aligning funding uh, through bonds or other things to uh, the optimal time to proceed with those capital projects. No, and I, you know, appreciate the fact that Caltrans is looking at reducing overall project costs by doing rehab as opposed to new construction or capital. So, And, and we're trying to deliver thing. projects at the absolute earliest opportunity that we can so that we get the benefits to the public sooner. Great. Thanks. Dr. Peters. Yeah, thank you. I just, Wayne, I just wanted to say I, uh, thank you for that. We're very interested in rehab, too. Um, but I, And you wouldn't have known this, but I think our executive director should have referred you to to, uh, the, to this meeting where you could have explained it and gone on from there. We're trying to, I guess, maybe focus what request was possible before we came to the board with something that yeah, uh, was a request. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? No one from the public? All right. Then we'll go to number 12, which is the budget to actual analysis, first and second quarter, fiscal year 2016-17. Yeah, this is a receiving file. Um, as part of the audit, uh, one of the outcomes was that uh, we should have a process. This is not a finding, but nonetheless, it's a better oversight. So what I'm uh, doing is uh, providing you a copy of the first and second quarter's budget to actuals uh, on revenues and expenditures. And what I would like to know from the board is, uh, subsequent to this meeting, would this uh, be better for the consent item or as a regular item? Any, any wishes of the board? Just except for me. It, it doesn't take that long. I think it's not a bad idea to have to have the information available. And if that way, if anybody's got any questions, we don't have to bother pulling it from consent. Okay. That and it gives the public a chance to weigh in should they want to. It's a regular item. Okay. And then we, we, we've got one person who says no consent, and one says. I think we, regular, if, if so. in that case, then we would probably err on the side of hearing it. Okay. Probably. Just yeah. But I, Larry, you can, you can always pull it off. You can always pull it off, consent, right. and talk about it. Right. Is there any other Issue. member of the board that has a particular desire? Because I, th I think it's just just as easy to do as Director Howell said, and just move through it. And if there's no questions, it's just as time consuming as pulling it off consent. So. Well, with that, I move the item. It's actually receiving file. <laughs> let, let it be noted that uh, Director Natoli has received and filed. <laughs> as a, a non-consent matter? <laughs> any, any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Spencer, the ex Executive Director's State of the Agency Address. With this, I'm going to move to the podium. This is a new item uh, for, the, or for the new uh, thing for the this year. and. It is my first time doing an address, so you'll bear with me. <laughs> okay, so the object of a um, state of the agency as address is kind of a forward-looking, looking at legislation, et cetera, policies, and things like that. And that's how I've looked it up since I've never given a state of an agency address before. But uh, I looked at our mission, and the mission of the STA is to maintain and improve the quality of life in Sacramento County. Our transportation system requires our funds, and, and it all goes to the benefit of our public. Um, this agency has continued to provide funding under Measure A and works effectively to manage those funds. Uh, for instance, we just uh, recently completed the over-the-top I-80 project with Caltrans, and that used STA funding. Uh, the grand opening of the Sacramento Valley Station is another hallmark of where we've used our funding to advance the quality of life here. There are specific safeguards in the ordinance to ensure that the funding is used properly, and these safeguards use, uh, include the Independent Taxpayer Oversight Committee to supervise fiscal and performance audits regarding the use of all of our sales tax funds and provide the independent review to ensure that all our funds are spent in accordance with the provisions of the ordinance. And as you've heard, we've, uh, uh, from our uh, ITOC chair, they have been reinvigorated and having public meetings. We've implemented a new website for the committee to improve the transparency to the public. Uh, Measure A continues to fund needed projects across the county, including road repair, public transit, improved bicycle pedestrian and safety, and specialized transportation for seniors and persons with disabilities. 
and improving the air quality. Uh, we've provided many resources for projects that otherwise would not be accomplished, and we've leveraged uh, other state and federal dollars that have come available because of the local funds as a match. Um, additionally, the STA provides for this freeway service patrol in the area. Uh, the STA program manager, Jennifer Dahl, has done a wonderful job and recently, as a result, has been appointed the 2017 vice chair for the statewide motorist aid committee for CalSafe and FSP. Uh, the governor's new quarter mobility program includes an increase for the FSP program, a $25 million annual increase, and FSP state funding hasn't changed in 10 years, so this is a welcome add. Uh, this year, uh, next year coming up, will be a time to position the agency as a good partner to our recipients by understanding their needs and prioritizing the agency's ability to meet those needs, which we will find out after uh, we understand our cash flow analysis and the various needs that are going on. Now recently, in January, the California State Transportation Agency held a last minute call to all of the Metropolitan Planning Organizations, or MPOs as we know them and our TPAs, which is the Regional Transportation Planning Agencies. Uh, they were asked by the National Governors Association to come up with three to five <coughs> projects, uh, transportation projects, statewide for possible federal funds. Uh, this was sort of a fire drill exercise, as I understand it, uh, as uh, the new administration came on board and they talked about an infrastructure, uh, infrastructure package. Uh, we are, uh, have a, a list put together, the state forwarded, and we are in a waiting position to see what federal funds may be available for projects as uh, the federal works out what those opportunities might look like. Um, I've been involved uh, in the past few months as the co-chair of the state legislative uh, summit. Uh, unfortunately, the summit is scheduled for today, and so I am here instead. But uh, nonetheless, I wrote much of the policy paper that was advanced through our legislators, and we coordinated with the other committees on mutual policies. For example, economic development and uh, transportation together look to support our region's efforts to form public-private partnerships, uh, especially with autonomous vehicles and connected vehicle manufacturers and other related companies. It'll bring jobs to the area, it'll bring technology, and it'll help make efficient transportation. Transport, uh, Sacramento is at a uh, unique moment in its history uh, with the opening of our new Golden One Center and its technology capabilities. A uh, new City of Sacramento Innovation and Growth Fund has been established. A uh, growing technology community, we are poised to continue our momentum by becoming a demonstration hub for the new technologies. Automated and connected vehicles testing presents a tangible opportunity to continue the evolution of innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem in transportation. The US DOT has already designated 18 cities as test centers, um, and that was identified in their Beyond Traffic report under Secretary Fox. But one of the things that I've been worked on is all efforts thus far have been focused on automated cars. And I've been speaking at uh, conferences where I can and trying to help bring focus to include automation in transit and other service vehicles such as garbage trucks, delivery vehicles, and other types of modes that actually congest our roadways on a daily basis. Um, so these conferences include localized, mostly San Francisco Bay Area, Silicon Valley, um, smart cities, Internet of Things, and other academic conferences. I was at UC Berkeley recently. Um, I led the Federal Transit Administration through the Connected <coughs> Vehicle Safety Pilot prior to coming here as your director. And so I have really a good basis for bringing these uh, things to light. So in partnership with the city and the county of Sacramento, as well as bringing private enterprise to develop and test transit technologies, I think Sacramento can be a real point of focus on these technologies. And it's what I hope to develop as what I call a Sacramento Transit Advanced Research and Test Center on Automation. You gotta have a good acronym, right? So it's Start CA. Um, with that, I'd like to actually show you a bit of a video, and this is a project I worked on while I was at Caltrans, as well as at the FTA uh, with UC Berkeley, and this is a actual bus that is in operation in Eugene, Oregon. So with that, I'll give you a better perspective of what I'm talking about.
The Vehicle Assist and Automation System, or VAA, was developed to enable a new form of transportation with the efficiencies and quality of light rail at a much lower cost. This innovative magnetic guidance technology was developed via the PATH program at UC Berkeley. Hi, I'm Bill Mulliken, an instructor and driver for Lane Transit District. The VAA is a very reliable system. I've gone through the corridor several hundred times already. It takes away the liability from the drivers. The benefits of precision docking is that the bus gets close enough to the curb to where people can step easily onto the bus and wheelchairs and walkers can get on with the ramp. It also gives us an opportunity to look around on the platforms and see other cars coming because we're not concentrating on keeping the vehicle inside the guideway. It is the first time that an automatically guided transit bus has been tested in revenue service in the United States. The Lane Transit District in Eugene, Oregon tested the VAA system for six months and confirmed its reliability, cost savings, and precision. Russ Arnold, Marketing Manager at Lane Transit District. The precision docking system, which we called uh, MAGS on our end, was fantastic. It helped reduce driver stress at some difficult boarding areas where they have to manage, not only paying attention to how close they're getting to the platforms, but also a lot of individuals, customers waiting to get on the platform. It took, it removed that stress for them. And then it really helped us with some maintenance costs is what we found and what we're really hopeful about. It, it made it so that, you know, Every single time we brought that bus in exactly where it needed to be with the same gap, the gap never changed. We didn't have to worry about people hurting themselves or falling into the gap because we knew it was always consistent and we knew that there was no tire rubbing, there was no anything because that docking system just brought it in perfectly. It's been fantastic and we're excited to see um, how we can expand it into our system. Since its implementation in 2014, the VAA system has resulted in benefits for both riders and drivers of LTD buses. Its precision docking, which reduces curbside gaps, offers easier boarding and safety for disabled passengers. Its precise magnetic technology, or MAGS, also results in less tire and wheel alignment maintenance, as well as less wear and tear on both roadways and transit stops. The result is a system that will save substantial monies down the road, reduce travel time, and improve schedule reliability. The VAA system is a good fit for LTD, and most importantly, for its many riders. The VAA project is sponsored by the Federal Transit Administration and the Intelligent Transportation Systems Joint Program Office of the United States Department of Transportation and California Department of Transportation. Well, I hope that gives you a little better perspective on uh, the thing is, is we need to bring more tools to bear. You've got to have more tools in the toolbox, and this is just one way of doing that. Um, through partnerships with other self-help agencies and the Self-Help Counties Coalition, I look to assist in developing the necessary legislation and fund transportation to fix our roads, as well as provide incentives and policies needed to spur innovations such as this that look at the future of our transportation system. Following year of 2018, I will be very active with many projects coming ready, and the agencies are looking at our ability to fund those projects. We plan on continuing our efforts to gain support for the meeting the demands of our transportation infrastructure, as well as looking to other funding opportunities from both state and federal funds to complete these needed projects. And with that, I will be open to questions. All right, any questions? Comments? Okay. My only comment would be that you should talk to RT about this. It might be an interesting cost-saving way to get RT or something, some branch of RT to the airport. Yes, I, uh, I've have opened up some of the discussion with Neil Nance, their lead engineer, and uh, also with some of the city staff because the mayor uh, Steinberg has mentioned about becoming a demonstration center. I think these are opportunities that Sacramento can leverage, and I'd like to help participate and bring that to bear with my experience, Mr. Chair. I, I, we have uh, Director Natoli is next, then yeah. Director Carr, and then Director Hanson. 
I was just going to uh, thank Jeff for his first ever address, uh, State of the uh, Agency. Even uh, I think it was really helpful, certainly to summarize not only the mission, but you know how that ties in with the work we've done and, and work you're looking forward to, you know, bringing forward. Uh, uh, to the authority and certain things we're engaged in uh, uh, currently, I think it's really useful. I just wanted to ask on that: Did did I understand that so Caltrans funded that project, or were just participated in it? It was a it, it funded parts of the project. Uh, it was initially a Caltrans project. And it started back in 1997 with the automated highway system demonstration and the I-15 in San Diego. Um, in 2002 and 2003, it was applied to the buses. In fact, uh, the actuators uh, had to be manufactured. They were never, they didn't exist. And Why so, did they have to go to Oregon to do it? Why did they couldn't find them in well, California they, wanted to do because it? Because California law doesn't allow automation. That's why we demonstrated it up there. Very good. Interesting. And that's what I mean by working on our legislation to enable the technology. I heard your address, yes. Yes. You, you made your point. Thanks. Okay. Dr. Carr. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Jeff, I know this is the first one you've done. Uh, the mission of the Transportation Authority is to maintain and improve the quality of life in Sacramento. And I assume we are focusing on transportation in that regard. So what I would like to know, and I don't expect you to answer this today, but maybe in the next presentation, is how are we doing? What is the quality, to what extent are we meeting our mission? How are our roads? How are our, how's our public transportation? How much time are we wasting on freeways, waiting for um, the traffic to clear? If we're providing services on the uh, road to stranded vehicles, how are we doing on that? So I appreciate the state of the agency, but I'd like to focus a little more on the state of the mission. Mm -hmm. Where are we, to what extent are we accomplishing our mission? To answer your question, the I don't know that we'll have that information available for the next meeting, but that is where the ITOC is looking at our performance evaluation. That will like, actually answer many of those questions. How are we doing as an agency in addressing our mission? Yeah, I, I'd like to know that if I don't go to the ITOC meeting. Well, it'll be presented here at the board once we do the findings. Director Hansen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Um, I'm a little confused. Um, you know, I, I was chair for a little while, so I have a little bit of memory, but I thought primarily we were a pass-through agency that was to uh, make sure that we did what we said we were going to do related to Measure A, both the first one and the second one, but that we weren't a policy-making body at the point at which we work with our jurisdictions to make a, a transportation measure, and I think the public <coughs> who came out here today uh, want us to do even better than last time. Um, about that is to engage the community and and our stakeholders but um, I'm confused as to why you're involved in policy making when this board really isn't a policy making body for the purposes of setting uh, fix it first policy transit policy or any of those other things this doesn't establish any policy that is overriding of anyone uh, this board as you said is not a policy making body but working with those other jurisdictions that do make policy, I think that we can bring to bear some of the ideas of innovation, efficiencies in our system, and that's where I want to just work with those but, agencies. But my understanding is your your core role and our core, core role as an agency is to, other than the freeway service patrol and those particular abandoned vehicle programs, is to monitor fiscally the adherence to the measure that the jurisdictions have and to pass through money in an appropriate way. And it is my understanding that because of the resource deficiencies that you've talked about that we are not able to even maybe accomplish some of those basic tasks so I wonder why we're exceeding that core role in new ways that aren't consistent with the central mission of the authority and I would have concerns about your engagement um, in those ways as a board member but also somebody who sits on several of those other bodies when those bodies are the appropriate place to raise these issues whether it's bus rapid transit or some sort of automated vehicle policy this is not the body which would make those decisions it would either be the city council or other other local government the county board of supervisors regional transit um, as as our agencies that we partner with that, that is what I expect as well. But they don't have those discussions or so, necessarily expertise. So in the state of the 
the authority report that you just gave, I didn't hear anything about how our partnerships with our fellow agencies are doing, um, what their feedback is on what we should be doing and could be doing better, um, nor um, any other feedback relevant to the actual state of the transportation authority. Um, so, but I heard a lot of interesting things about transportation policy that are beyond the scope of the agency as I understand it. Then I would uh, ask for direction. If you don't want me to be doing that, I would look to the board to say that then. Well, I, I defer to the chair. Okay. I th I th but, but I would say, you know, I count on our executive director to know what his job duties are as contained in the job description. And I just hope that you continue to focus on that. I think that uh, we can end it at that. I think we'll have uh, further discussion of, about just that when we dovetail into the next agenda item, which is actually closed session, in which we are dangerously close to being very late. Uh, so uh, with that, are there any other questions or comments? Yes. Yes, sir. Director Carr. Uh, I think Mr. Hanson raises an excellent point, and we need to decide what it is we're doing and make our mission statement uh, align with what it is we're trying to do. If we're trying to improve the quality of life is one thing. If we're here to manage the fund efficiently, then that's another thing. And that guides the organization in a different direction. But we just need to make this clear because it's confusing. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. And with that, we will go into recess and go into closed session. The Sacramento Transportation Authority, would the clerk call the roll? Establish quorum. Campion. Carr. Here. Frost. Here. Guetta. Here. Hansen. Harris. Here. Hume. Kennedy. Here. McGarvey. Here. Natoli. Here. Peters. Here. Chenier. Cerna. Here. Suen. Turner. Howe. Here. Okay. okay. You barely have a quorum. We do? Yes. Yes. You have a quorum. Thank you. Be nice. Yeah. One, one, yeah, yeah, one over. <laughs> Mr. Burke, is there anything to report out of closed session? No action. Okay. Thank you. With that, we'll be adjourned.